Where are you going? I've got some tomatoes for French boat. It's on the other side. This side is forbidden to enter. Did you not see the sign? No. Turn off your engine. Get out. Papers? You may continue. Thank you. Turn left at the end and go back the way you've come. Read the signs in the future. Until further orders, the number of foot patrols must be doubled. Their primary purpose must be the inspection of civilian identity papers. Random checks to be made on pedestrians and in buses, places of entertainment, including cafes and bars. Particular attention to be paid to young men between the ages of 18 to 30. Such men shall be instructed to remove their headgear, and any showing distinctive service haircuts will be brought in for further examination regardless of proof of identity. The possibility exists also that numbers of British sailors may be injured and in hiding. You are therefore ordered to draw up a plan for immediate random house-to-house -house search concentrating on coastal property. That is all. Show in Dr. Martel. Good morning. Major. Sit down, please. Pharmaceuticals this time. Anthracite last time. Yeah. Cooking oil and flour before that. There's always something. If your government in London ceased their attacks on merchant shipping carrying supplies, your own people might be better provided for. Had that occurred to you? 
What must have occurred to my government in London, Major, is that some of the supplies on that shipping might not be destined for the civilian population. Two nights ago, the lives of German sailors were put at risk. Two nights ago? It wasn't your sailors who died. I should tell you, Doctor, that unless these attacks cease, active consideration is being given to a reduction in the civilian ration. Reprisals? You can't do that. And what is it this time that we may not do? I was explaining how the continued attacks on unarmed merchant vessels might affect supplies. About which you are making constant representations. Unarmed be damned. Word is you had a warship there. Word is right, Doctor, for which one of your destroyers was sunk. But I would point out that they were the aggressors. Perhaps the Royal Navy will now leave well alone. I doubt it. Then you will suffer. But you can't do that. You can't penalise us for something over which we have no control. Article 50 of the Hague Convention. If our ships and the French ships carrying supplies are constantly attacked, those supplies will not be sent. There's no question of collective punishment. Do not spout articles and conventions at me. I have no need of such guidance. Mm -hmm. No, that may well be true, but with respect, the phrase that Major Friedel used was, unless these attacks cease. This is not the occasion for semantics, Doctor. You and I both know what we mean. But will General Mayor Miller. Miller? I'm sorry. I'm... A new Commander-in-Chief has been appointed to these islands. General Mayor Miller commands the 319th Infantry Division. He is a keen horseman for an infantry man. His young officers have been known to complain of his rough, short ways with horses. And conventions? Nevertheless, you can ex scarcely expect us to write a letter to His Majesty's government in London requesting that His Majesty's Navy desist from its warlike task. All I ask, Doctor, in these difficult times is that you and your committee should sometimes temper your strength. You're not actually asking for sympathy, Major. I have no need of sympathy. I would like understanding. Yes, Major. My well, friend informs me you have some concern over medical supplies. Yes, I do. I have a very great deal of concern. We're dangerously low over the whole range of vaccines and serum. We have no insulin and enough anaesthetic for only the most urgent operations. The population is wide open to infectious diseases. We have nothing to stop it, nothing to treat it. There might as well be no doctors on the island. Is that the view of our own medical staff? Oh, well, they are not in disagreement, but equally they are not empowered to make up the deficiencies. And if there should be an epidemic of some kind, what then? We should have to treat our people. But stupid, isn't it? You encourage a reservoir of infection to build up in the population through malnutrition and then refuse to do anything about it when it spills over. That statement is both emotive and inexact. Neither of which makes the outcome wrong. The remedy is in your hands. The civil administration has a purchasing commission for trade with France. Buy what you need. But... But someone would have to go to call on drug houses, probably Paris. Someone who knows. A pharmacist or a medical man. Well, yes. You, Doctor? Well, yes, I just need papers. Your identity papers in French and German. Travel documents for occupied France. One guinea, ten marks. Well, what about some cold cream with a complexion? She liked that. It's uh, almost the last jar. What is the cost? Three marks. I will take. Something for their four lines. <laughs> Is it really almost the last chance? Oh, yeah. Well, I better have one for my four line then. Yeah. One shilling. What? Right. Well, you charged him nearly six bob. Mm, um, six and threepence, actually. I did? Mm. I used to sell those for sixpence. <laughs> well, look, you hang on to it. Make some more profit out of them. No, 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 no. They're nearly all gone. Shan't get any more. You have it. All right. I know. Yeah. These are getting few and far between. Worth more than their face vanny, I know. <laughs> It's all right. You did me a favour. Look, you uh, couldn't develop a film for me, could you? I don't do it now, Peter. Can't get a hold of the paper or the chemicals. These aren't holiday snaps, Mr. Wright. It's important and urgent. Come in the back.
You're sure he'll come, Ruth? Yes, yeah, same day every month. He'll come, Miss Clare. And he won't mind? Mind? He'll welcome the opportunity. Doesn't your sister ever worry? What is there to worry about? They know the country and the Germans don't. Well, how will you get it to him? There's a bar down by the arbour. He isn't supposed to come ashore, but I've met him there before. Fat Molly's? Yes. Well, really, Ruth, it's a dreadful place. It's all right, as long as you don't go upstairs. <laughs> is this the ship that sank our destroyer? Yes, it's an Elbing class torpedo boat. Doesn't look very big. Well, the harbour master says it's about 1,200 tonnes, with the teeth of a shark. It's got four 4.1 inch guns and two triple 21 inch torpedo tubes. She's reputed to have a speed of about 35 knots and is also a mine layer. She's very new. I want to ask you what you're going to do with this. <laughs> no, best not. Out. Identity card. Take off your hat. Darjeeling. No, it isn't even tea. Well, I'm sure it'll be very refreshing. Well, it's better than substitute coffee anyway. Do I detect an aroma of the St. Saviour Blackberry leaf? Highly esteemed by the connoisseurs. Well, it may be a boring and difficult time for us, but it isn't dangerous. I keep thinking of people with sons and daughters away somewhere, just, just fearing to hear the worst all the time. Parents of all those men on that destroyer. I believe many of them were picked up. Well, some of them were picked up. Mm. How's Clive? Oh, still in off flag 9A Spangenberg. All right. Where he was four months ago. Oh, I'm sure he is still. He's a sensible boy, very responsible, I've always thought, inside. A bit like his father. Oh, very like his father. They're all like their fathers. Well, I see you've got a fine lot of work for me there. I'm afraid one or two are the worse for wear. They won't unpick too well. Oh, the Children's Emergency Bureau are thankful to get any wool. I don't suppose it'll matter if there are some knots. No. That's fine. After all, this is a proclamation from the military commander in France. Is it not clear enough? I'm not sure General Stultnagel intends that to be mandatory on you, Her Commandant. No. Any person involved in such an act, either as perpetrator, participant, or instigator, will, upon conviction, be condemned to death. Does that sound ambiguous to you? Will General Major Miller feel it to be mandatory upon him? Well, put like that. Put like that or any other way, I think he will. It does say, upon conviction, Herr Major. Otto the Führer, in his wisdom, determines to make this island of ours a fortress, an impregnable fortress. Army Group D have sent General Major Müller in charge of the 319th to accomplish it. He has designated much of the north coast to be a defence area and therefore a prohibited zone. Notices are posted everywhere and yet two boys with a camera are caught near the MP2 forward observation positions. With respect, Herr Major, that does not establish a prima facie case of spying. Have you seen the photographs? I believe they've not yet been developed. Then you believe wrongly, Oberleutnant. The Radetzky field gun battery, the Pierleberg 3.7 centimeter flak emplacement, the Reichenberg 10.5 centimeter artillery casement, the Steinbruck Navy battery. No prima facie case? No, I accept that there is, Herr Major. And so will General Major Müller, will upon conviction be condemned to death. Two 16 year old boys. They have not yet been charged, Herr Commandant. Then see that they are. With spying? with disobeying orders of the military government. See that there's a destroyed auto immediately, and the negatives. This Francois, is he trustworthy? Of course he's trustworthy. He's a maquisade. Oh, some of those resistance people are pretty odd. He's fighting for freedom so odd. You know what I mean. Unstable, undependable, that sort of thing. 
Well, he's hardly likely to do anything to get his own wife's sister into trouble now, is he? Anyway, there's no alternative. What do you think they'll do? Well, what our people will do? Hmm. Well, I hope the RAF will bomb it to smithereens. A, it sank one of our destroyers, and B, it may cause Jerry to think twice about establishing a permanent base here. I mean, the harbour master told me he'd already had several Kriegsmarine survey teams around. Well, a few more fast torpedo boats like this one and channel convoys would cease to exist. Hello. Hello, Daddy. What's going on? Protest meeting? <laughs> What the hell's all this? A bit of amateur intelligence work. Looks rather expert to me, Peter. Yes, well, one does one's best. Does one's best to do what? Get yourself shot? Get this stuff out of my house, my lad, will you? Afraid of being compromised, Daddy. Compromised? Do you mean embarrassed or dead? Look, if we're just going to allow ourselves to... No, I want to know. Do you include the possibility of actually forfeiting your life when you say that? But you don't actually think No, about well, it. you may not, but I certainly do. And not just on your account or on my account. I, I know, I know on Mummy's. Yes, you are absolutely right. And don't you forget it. There is your brother rotting away in some prisoner of war camp, me trying to duck bricks from the Germans, as well as our own people and the family to feed. And don't you think that's enough for one person to have to worry about? Surely to God, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, Peter? Ouch. Oh, well, he's right. Look, Ruth says that after tonight, Francois won't be back for another month. Then it's tonight. What time's he coming? He told Ruth he'd get there as soon after opening as he could and stay for about 30 minutes. Well, that's not very long. Well, the longer he stays, the more chance of a patrol picking him up on the way back to the boat. That's all right. Well, the pub's only open for two hours and they close half an hour before curfew. That's half past nine. He'll probably be there between half past seven and eight. Mm. Well, Fat Molly's can be pretty rowdy. I'll escort Ruth. Yeah. We'll try and be there... About 7.45. Now, yeah, well, better go and mend some fences with your father. This damn wood's too green. Well, I've got some uh, sacks of dry stuff I can let you have. Oh, it's you. At least if it doesn't burn, it lasts longer. It doesn't give off much heat, either. It looks like I wouldn't worry too much about Claire if I was you. Oh, wouldn't you? What I mean is... What you mean is I shouldn't worry about her because she's not actually involved in something I would worry about? Or because you're a decent sort of chap who doesn't like his friends to be unhappy? Well, you got me in a bit of a corner there, haven't you? Yes, I know the feeling. Look, Peter, it is not just us, the family. I do have to take into consideration my official position. Oh, God, that sounds stuffy, but you know what I mean, don't you? I mean, as a member of the controlling committee, I do have certain obligations. But, damn it, I don't have to apologise for it. I have to think of the public good. I spent half my life down at their blasted commandanter, arguing about calorie levels, protein deficiency, skim milk versus whole milk for expectant mothers, how long each day the gas and electricity supplies have to be cut off, how many bicycles have to be commandeered, who doesn't get what, when, and how often. And I'm fed up with it. But somebody's got to do it, and there aren't too many of us around who can. Now, I have cultivated a correct and reasonably productive relationship with Richter and Friedel and the rest of them, and that is the best I can do for the community. Now, if Claire or anyone else I'm close to gets caught in some short-sighted act of devil-may-care, then that whole blinking lot goes for a burden. Yes. There should be half a bottle of old wine in that cupboard. Hey, you. Is that mine? It's Maureen to you, Fritz. Gone yet? Sure isn't the stuff nearly all gone. And I'm thinking you've had more than enough by the lucky young woman. Get some more. It's only three quarters of an hour of closing time. He said he'd be here as soon as possible. Have another one. Oh, no, sir. Oh, good. It'll look fishy if we don't, and it's Peter, not sir. Cheers. 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 Oh, how are you, busy? And let that be your last now. 
Well now, Mr. Porteous. Another Dubonnet and a beer, please, Maureen. It'll be a pleasure. Where's your mother? She'll be down in a while. It's all right, is it? Oh, Molly's just fine. It's himself I'm worried about. Uh -huh. Himself? The skipper of the French boat that's in. Molly's sure he's a case or two of brandy stashed away, and she's after liberating it. <laughs> Poor fellow. <laughs> I'm sorry them bastards sunk one of your destroyers a couple of nights ago. Yes, well, it's war, isn't it? Well, as a good neutral, I hope they pay for it. Next time you've a couple of hen's eggs, think of Molly and me. Thanks, Maureen. <laughs> that is mine. You haven't paid for your drink. Will you let go of me, Anne? You did not take his money. For him, it is free. But it isn't for you. Come on. This plane that delivers supplies for the monkey, how often does it come? Francois won't speak about it. All he said once was that he could get a message to England by that of funny Greek name. With my son. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Francois. It's inside. Francois, this is a friend, Mr. Porteous. Peter Porteous. I know all about you. Uh, Ruth will explain. Can I get you a drink? Uh, a glass of wine, monsieur. <laughs> Maureen. A glass of burgundy, please. You. Buy me cognac. No, I'm sorry. Civilians are not permitted to buy spirits. Go on back to your ship, Fritz. You've had too much. You do not call me Fritz. I'll call you what I like. Let's get out, Hans. That's right. You take Hans' knees and bumpsy daisy back to his hammock. You fat English pig. Don't you bloody call me English, Adolf! What is going on? <laughs> Mr. Porteous, not in trouble, I hope. No, this man fell off his stool. I was just helping him. You're from the torpedo boat? Yes, sir, the lightning. Get back there. Yes, sir, the lightning. You, wait. Now, Mr. Porteous, perhaps you'll be kind enough to tell me what is going on. He absolutely knocked the wind out of my sail. I'd love to have seen your face. <laughs> you know, that Major Friedel's a wily cove. He just sits there, impassive as Aunt Maud's cat. <laughs> Waiting till you've said too much, and then he just pulls the rug out from under your feet. Eh? As well as taking the wind out of your sails? Yeah, and knocking me down with a feather. Don't forget the feather. You sure this is going to be all right, Philip? Oh, and of course it is. Cinnamon stops vomiting. I haven't started. Well, just wait till you've had some. Uh, pinch of cinnamon, one second, et voila. Le mal vine. Well, at least it's warming. It seems, Mr. Porteous, that you have a talent for finding trouble. As I said, it was an accident. Well, none of us seek for trouble, Mr. Porteous. When we find it, it is always an accident, yes? You are a philosopher, Noble Lieutenant. A good definition of a policeman. Noble Lieutenant. Francois Duval. Yes. French citizen. From the SS Normand, yes? Yes. Your landing permit? I do not have one. Not have one? It's not permitted for non-registered foreigners to set foot on the island. My ship comes here regularly. Giving you an opportunity for illicit trading, no doubt. No, I am here for a drink in a harbour bar, that is all. That it's not a permitted. Turn out your pockets. Okay, 
The papers are in order. Yes, Herr Oberleutnant. Dismiss them. It is now closed. You. Are you with this man? No. All right, you may go. And you, Mr. Porteous, you may go too. Mr. Porteous! Watch out for accidents. <laughs> Put these back. I'm taking you to military headquarters. Is it true? Why should Kluger lie about it? Then it is true. Your reasoning does you credit, Reinecker. It is a disgrace. Tell him that. It is or should be your responsibility. So, it is not the Commandant you're criticizing. These men are spies and they are civilians. It is not a matter for the military commander. It is a matter for you. Listen, Reinecker, the reason I am here is because the Wehrmacht commander is here, not the other way around. It is Field Command 515 which represents the German military government, not the Wehrmacht. And as such, threats to security are your concern, or should be. Maya Rita and I have to work together. We have a unity of purpose. It would not make sense for us to compete over matters of jurisdiction. Anyway, there's no question of disagreement. I would have done the same. Such leniency is an encouragement to subversion. Oh, Reinecker, come on. These men, as you call them, are boys of 16. Engaged on a dangerous prank, merely. I have seen the photographs these boys took. Such information in the hands of the enemy would be of grave consequence. And how was this material of such grave consequence to be conveyed to the enemy? That is beside the point. Nothing is beside the point when one administers occupied territory. Just thank God you don't have to. Will it assist the military governor in France if civil unrest breaks out in these islands because we start shooting juveniles caught out in some youthful folly? Will Berlin think any of the better of us for it? General Stupnagel has I know what said General Stupnagel said. It is not a question of ignoring instructions from high command. It is a matter of interpreting them sensibly. A dangerous responsibility to assume. Dangerous? In what way? For whom? I meant should things turn out not as calculated. I hope that is what you meant. If I see things happening which should not be happening, I have a duty. Reinecke, the SS is an elite corps with special privileges and responsibilities. I hope you consider loyalty to your immediate colleagues to be numbered among them. Bring him in. So, Francois Duval, does your ship come here regularly? Yes. At what intervals? Once a month. And do you every time break the regulations by coming ashore? Well, do you? I have done. I'm sure you have. It's that Molly. She's a good port in a storm. Well, is she? Mm. I thought so. You sailors are all the same. You know it is forbidden to come ashore. Yes. And yet you do it. Are you the only one who breaks the regulations, or are there others? Others do it. Nobody stops us. Then I must stop you, mustn't I? A few days in jail will perhaps deter you and your comrades from breaking the regulations. It will cost me my job if you send me to prison. So what? I am the quartermaster. It would hold up the ship until they had found another helmsman. You people who break the law are all the same, aren't you? The penalty is always too great. It's all right for others, but not for you. Isn't that so? It's just as well for you. I didn't catch you trading in black market goods. All right. This time I'll let you go. Next time you won't be so lucky. Take him back to his ship. Just a ruby, Lieutenant. Come. Duval. Are you married? I am, yes. Your wife should thank me for keeping you out of that place. I hoped you might still be here. We took nobody. Oh, no English sailors, at any rate. Only one Frenchman. A French sailor? Yes. But not a marine de guerre. Marine Marchand. 
I see. Is there something, Herr Mayor? Only... Why did you not do as the Commandant asked, Kluger? In what respect, Herr Mayor? Mayor Richter commanded you to destroy those photographs immediately. Yes, he did. And that is what I did. But not before Reinecker saw them. I left the photographs on my desk while I went to get the negatives. We share an office. It's very difficult. But you discussed the matter with him. I could not do otherwise. He asked me about the photographs. I could not refuse. I could not. To refuse to discuss such a subject with an SS officer would be taken badly, very badly. The situation should never have arisen. Reinecker made no comment to me about the Commandant's decision. He has to me. Unfavorably? Very. Does it matter? Depends if he keeps it to himself. I thought the Commandant's decision very realistic. The Commandant's powers are, like mine, those of an envoy rather than plenipotentiary. We do not have full independent powers on this small island of ours. Does that matter? It would, if other people in other places disagreed with our policy. Is that a possibility? <sighs> Everything is a possibility. Oh, a probability, then. As the war goes on longer, the mood gets harder and room for compassion smaller. Am I all? I'm sorry about the photographs. Can't be helped. You know the Führer intends to turn our island into a fortress. Yes, so the Commandant was saying. He intends that St. Peter Port shall be developed as a base for torpedo boats and U-boats. Nobody offered me a warming bedtime drink. Your father thought that someone ought to be left behind to make the burial arrangements. <laughs> Olive. Yes? I need these. Yes. I can't wear them like this. Well, they have darned them. With blue wool. Yes. They're grey socks. Well, blue darning wool's all I have left anyway. They won't show. Just don't take your shoes off, Danny. <laughs> well, I don't know. My first trip to France since war broke out, and I've got to go in multicoloured socks. Poor darling. If that's an emergency, I'm on the boat. Come in. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid I won't make it back before curfew. Oh, it's you. Well, you've got to stay here, of course. Oh, well, I'll quite happily curl up on a chair. You took nothing of the kind. You can sleep in Clive's room. Oh, no, good idea. No, not another word. I'll go and get the sheets. Well, I don't want to put you no out. No problem at all. Do shut up. What happened? Out late with some floozy? <laughs> well, I don't care. Yes, actually. Yeah, it's your Ruth. Ah, Ruth. Ruth Morris. Yes, uh, there was a spot of bother uh, at Molly's bar, so I escorted her home. You were at Fat Molly's with our maid, sir. Oh, Daddy, don't be so stuffy. He's only young once. Uh, she was meeting her sister's husband. Uh, he works on the normal. Oh, really? I'm due to go to France on her tomorrow in multicoloured socks. What? Oh, I see. Well, I hope nobody else does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I, I saw her. I saw her. Isn't her brother-in-law French? Yes, he is. Thought the Germans had cracked down on foreign crews coming ashore. Yes, well, that was partly what all the fuss was about. Oh, was it? I see, yes. Well, I'd better go and put a few things together, hadn't I? Night, Daddy. See you in the morning. Night, nice, sir. Better watch him, you know. I'd hate to lose a maid servant. I think you had him worried for a moment. Yeah. What sort of trouble? Oh, the Germans have got patrols out everywhere. They must think that some of our fellows got ashore the other night. Kluger walked in just after Francois arrived. Oh. He asked to see everyone's papers. Of course, Francois didn't have the right one, so they searched him. What, did they find the airplane? No. She's a good girl, that Ruth. She'd already passed it to him, but got it back right underneath Kruger's nose. Oh, well, I hope he doesn't get into trouble. No, I don't think so. They marched him off to the commander tour, but I hung around outside and saw him go back to the harbour. I mean, that's why I'm so late. Look, if Francois is back on the boat, then we... Coral hydrate. I've seen hydrobrom. Cotton wool? Yes, cotton wool. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Hello, you're an early bird. I'll come back later. No, it's all right. I'm just off. Sir? Uh-huh? I hear you're going to France. Katka. Yes, that's right. On the right. Normand? Uh-huh. I wanted to ask a favour. I wondered if you'd give this note to someone to give to my brother-in-law, mm. Francois. Any of the crew will know him. He's a quartermaster. Oh, yes, you had a spot of bother last night, didn't you? And I didn't get a chance to give it to him. Not assisting in smuggling currency, I hope. Yeah, this should be on fried bread, but I'm afraid that fat won't run to it. Sorry, it looks lovely. Olive, give back my razor. Yes, I do. Thank you. Well, now, what do you all want me to bring back from Paris? Scent? Chocolates? Silk stockings. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just yourself. Oh, no problem about that. Bad pennies always come back. 
Yes, where are you going? SS Normand for Granville. Your card of identity and travel authorization. You have luggage? Yes, a case in the booth. Open it. You have a permit to use this? Yes, of course. I'm on official government business. There's only a change of clothing in there. Yes, yes, open it. What is that? Oh, that's just a letter for a friend. It is forbidden to carry letters abroad. Yes, I know that perfectly well. I was just... It is evasion of censorship regulations. That is for someone on a boat. It is forbidden. Fast torpedo boat Voten. Yes, it is, Hauptsturmführer. Was this taken before or after the attack on the British destroyers? Can you tell? I think after, Hauptsturmführer. I've been on duty both times she was loading torpedoes. The first time before the attack, she was low in the water. But here, she's riding high. It is since the attack. You're sure? Yes, I'm sure. Then it was yesterday or the day before? I think it was yesterday, Hauptsturmführer. Why, Gefreiter? I... It is not certain. Tell me what you think. Yesterday in the morning, when she was loading torpedoes, a civilian lorry drove near to the basin. Well, it is forbidden. Strictly. Yes, Herr Oberleutnant. The driver had missed his way. He was looking for the freight ship. Was there a name on this lorry? No, Hauptsturmführer. But I did stop it, and I inspected the papers of the driver. And you loved this incident? Oh, yes. He's a farmer from St. Saviour. His name is Porteus. Remain outside. Well, Kluger, I think your day has come. Go and pick him up. Very well, Hauptsturmfuhrer. And, uh, and look for the camera. Of course. Send my tell him. Sit down. Sit down. In August, we shot a man for releasing a carrier pigeon with a message for England. Should have shot the pigeon, shouldn't you? I'm not a spy. Then perhaps you were the pigeon. <laughs> Who gave you a message? Released you. Hmm? Then you are the spy. Damn these people. They make clemency of vice. One conspires as a simple act of humanity to turn a blind eye to deliberate acts of espionage. They were only 16. Old enough in Russia to die. You were right, Dieter. Was I? I wonder. Mueller would think not. General Meyer Mueller and the 319th have come, and they will go. Then in the meantime, Dr. Martel is not a 16-year-old boy. I 
think it's disgraceful the way you burst into people's houses. It is not an aspect of police work I enjoy, Mrs. Porteous. I never have. And we do not initiate. We respond. And you're responding to what exactly? To some beastly tittle-tattle. My son has done nothing. Your protestations are very convincing, Mrs. Porteous. But then, of course, they always have been. I must detain your son for further questioning, Mrs. Porteous. You're arresting him? I am. For what offence? For acts in breach of paragraph 384, section 8 of the Hague Convention, requiring citizens of occupied territories to refrain from acts prejudicial to the occupying powers. In this case, spying. Come. Um, it'll be all right. They'll let him go. They, they won't do anything. How could you say that? Because he's not a spy, and they'll believe him. Or well, they couldn't not believe him. However could Ruth do such a thing? Because I asked her to. But it has your name on it. I have never met him. Then why should he have a message for you? I do not know. And such an incriminating message. It will go hard on you, I think. There's been some mistake. We have him downstairs. I know this man. His name is Francois Duval. Yes, I know. Improperly ashore last night in Fat Molly's bar from the SS Normand. Porcius was there. And a girl. A young girl at your table. I know this girl, yes. When we went to the Martel's house with the Commandant, do you remember when we had the information that Martel's son was on the island? The girl is Martel's maid. What are you waiting for, Oberleutnant? Martel's house. Claire? Yes? The Germans have been. They've taken Peter. When? When did they? They just come. They searched Peter's room and took him away. Well, I'll, I'll ask Mummy if she can come over. Do you think she'd mind? I'm, te I'm terribly worried. No, of course she won't mind. Look, look, please don't worry. I I'm sure it'll be all right. Thank you, Claire. Yes. Bye. That was Helen. Yes. They've arrested Peter. Oh, my God. Well, I, I couldn't tell her about Daddy. No. No, I'll go over. Yes, she'd like you to. Who are you offending, Claire? The Germans. Why, Claire? To tell them it was me. You can't. They've got Daddy. Now Peter, and they will get Ruth. The Commandant to her, please. Did you not know she was involved? She doesn't know what she's saying. I believe she knows exactly what she's saying. This is appalling. Deliberate hostility aimed at the occupying power. General Stuttnagel has warned of the consequences of such actions, and the new commander-in-chief will not hesitate to interpret his proclamation to the letter. You and I and the third commandant are the prisoners of an act of utter irresponsibility from which no one can profit. I have done my best, my your Friedel has done his best, to ease for you the misfortunes of war, and our concern is thrown in our faces. She's here. My daughter? Sit down, Dr. Martel. Do you wish me to go, Herr Commandant? No, stay. When we first met in your father's house in the summer of 1940, your mother said to me, Major Richter, you will forgive my daughter her bad manners. For what? Do you remember? For saying I wanted to be any damn where where you were not. That is courtesy which, in the circumstances I could find wholly understandable, war is not a courteous business. But the war is being fought elsewhere. Not here. Not on these islands, not on Guernsey. We are at war. 
War is a state of conflict carried on by arms. You have none. War can be a state of mind. One not conducive to survival. You cannot win if you do not survive. What did you hope to accomplish with this? Air attack by the RAF. Let me tell you what would happen. The harbour is heavily defended by flak batteries. Here, on Albert Pier, Victoria Pier, St Julian Pier, and here in Castle Cornet. Are your aircraft will fly high to avoid the flak? Some of the bombs will miss their target, innocent people will be killed, and perhaps one torpedo boat will be sunk. For such an achievement, you are prepared to sacrifice the lives of five people. Your own, Mr. Porteous, the Frenchman, your maidservant, and your father. War is for professionals, Miss Martell, not for enthusiasts. It was only me and Peter, not the others. You are all implicated... My father didn't even know! ...for which the penalty must be death. Do I tell HQ? If you do, the result is a foregone conclusion. You may not proceed with those charges unless you do. I'm aware of that. Then if you do not wish for five executions, there is only one thing to do. That's one, For violation of regulations relating to censorship, you are hereby sentenced to six months' detention to be served in the Cherchemidi prison in France. Do you wish to say anything? Thank you, Major. You may go. Mr. For violation of regulations relating to prohibited zones, you are hereby sentenced to 12 months' detention to be served in the Cherchemidi prison in France. Do you wish to say anything? No, Major. You may go. I regret, Miss Martel, that I can find no charge against you, save one. And in the wider interests of the occupying power, I decline to pursue that issue further. You may go. You may go! I suppose you could call it the judgment of Solomon? <laughs> 